Hi, I'm Dave Kassler, Amateur Radio Call Sign KE0OG, and welcome to episode number 70 of Ask Dave. Today we're doing a review of uh, some test, operational tests with the Chameleon P-Loop antenna. I did an unboxing video on that uh, in AD50 and in AD54 uh, we did uh, the assembly uh, showing how to do the assembly of the antenna. It comes in a bag and you can carry it in a bag and it's very convenient that way. The bag really, once you pack the stuff in nicely, is not very big, not unwieldy, doesn't have big bumps sticking out. It's just exactly the kind of thing that you might want to throw over your shoulder for a hike or take out on a field expedition somewhere. So the antenna under test is the Chameleon HF Portable Loop Antenna 2.0. This is a tuned magnetic loop antenna and like all such antennas has very high Q, meaning it's touchy to tune, uh, but they're all that way. Um, including the MFJ antenna that I've been looking at, the 1788, which I have out in my backyard right now, which is designed for an entirely different use case. That antenna is designed to be put up, left up, and operated via a remote control, this box right here, um, on, on the desk, uh, whereas the you have to actually touch the P-loop antenna to turn the knob underneath to do, which makes it impossible to put up outside um, and then come inside and operate because there's no way to get to it to retune it for another frequency. But if you look at the use case uh, for some prepper or from, you know, Boy Scouts or uh, summits on the air or something like that, where you just want to set up and operate a bit without much muss or fuss this antenna i think they advertised two minutes i'd give it five but it goes up uh, very quickly the bag is called a dispatch bag it's a canvas bag a uh, third-party bag that uh, you get new they used to advertise them uh, in camouflage in uh, let's see i think it was woodland camel but you don't see that anymore uh, because uh, they uh, have gone to black, just all black, which is fine. Uh, so the use case is a field antenna. You've got to be where the operator is in a position to tune it. Now note the company's name, Chameleon. Okay, a chameleon is an animal that can adapt to the looks of its surrounding as a survival technique. And their motto is versatile, dependable, stealth, and built to last. Uh, I would say this product is definitely something that would interest the preppers. True, um, giving it a true outdoor test under uh, field conditions had to wait for me for quite a bit because we had a long spate of uh, bad weather. Um, we have had uh, some real good days recently, so I did the testing on Saturday. Um, this is our windy time of year. <laughs> it's said that it will be windy as long as there's snow on uh, horsefly and there still is snow out there. Now, I did explore one other use case, and I'll talk about that later. And that use case is using it for low-power digital modes like Whisper. Um, in a previous video, very recently, I set up uh, this little uh, beacon station right here. It's Whisper on 30 meters, and I have the... Uh, antenna right here beside me uh, tuned to that frequency uh, with some rather spectacular results that I'll tell you about later but let's go back to the the field uh, use case here so it sets up out of the bag and stows quite easily uh, the trick is to wind the antenna itself the coax uh, a little tighter to reduce the diameter uh, limited power capability it will not take a hundred watts um, you can get 20, 30, 40. There's a power compensator that you can get for an additional $100, which I do have on this unit here. And the Chameleon has a, a video on their website that shows the use of that, showing that this power compensator allows you to pump more power into the antenna. Now, the failure mechanism for the antenna is that the capacitor plates arc arc across 
And if that just happens a little bit, it's probably no big deal. But if it happens in such a way that an arc creates a permanent uh, bridge there, then you have to go in and break that arc and file it out of there so that it won't uh, break again. At least it usually is repairable. Um, the workmanship, I would say, is very good, solid, absolutely beautiful, uh, nothing that looks like it wasn't uh, put together with absolute tender loving care. Uh, and it, it makes you want to keep the antenna. Now, granted, it's going to be used in the field, so it's going to get dirty. Uh, the box containing the capacitor has a um, gasket on it that will keep it uh, dry in field conditions. Now, the uh, manufacturer has that box sealed. Now, I can guarantee you that if you have this thing out in an area where it's humid and you have quite a temperature swing between night and day, you will get water in there. And the way that works is when the thing gets hot, it's going to, unless you, you know, put the thing together to uh, uh, Apollo moonshot uh, specifications, uh, when it gets hot, it's going to expel some air. And then when it cools, it's going to ingest some air, and that air will be uh, with a higher humidity than the hot air. And you keep repeating that cycle, and you start building up water inside. Uh, we ran into this when I was in the Air Force uh, working on a radar uh, down in Florida, where it does get quite humid. The trick is to drill a very small hole in the bottom of the case that allows the water to, you know, allows the air pressure to equalize easily. And if there are a few drops of water down there, they can drain out that hole. Uh, and it keeps everything inside nice and dry. But in the meantime, it's sealed. And if you open the box, you will uh, violate the uh, warranty and ruin your warranty. Now, I opened the box so you wouldn't have to. So you can uh, see what's inside without having to break yours open. Uh, we'll, we'll come up on that in a minute. Now there's two options available. The plain antenna at $400, $399, uh, with free shipping from Chameleon, and the power compensator for another hundred. Uh, hundreds, a lot of money for something that looks like a little hockey puck. Uh, but I don't really know what's in there. Uh, there, I've seen the thing mounted on the antenna in three different positions in uh, chameleon literature uh, two different positions in video uh, different position entirely in the manual so i i would say just put it where you want to and get it out of the way uh, if you do have arc it will uh, you'll hear it usually if it's relatively quiet it'll make quite a bit of noise although that's a pretty sturdy plastic box which might hide an occasional arc if you do get arcing, stop transmitting immediately. Uh, test it out with very low power to see if you can still get a good SWR. If you can, you can go ahead. If it starts to arc again, you're going to have to either send it back um, or open the box and very carefully file down uh, the leftovers from the arcing and file them very, very carefully. The capacitor in there has fairly closely placed uh, plates. So it's a little hard to get a file in there. You'd have to get a very small one, and that's something to be very careful about doing, not something that I would do lightly. Doing so will void your warranty. So if it's still in warranty, send it back and uh, have the people at Chameleon do it. They have the right tools. They can do it very, very quickly. Um, now, I've seen a chameleon video show the antenna with the power compensator, and it was fed 100 watts and was still working fine. I would not do that. In fact, the video itself says, don't do this at home. All right, I kept the power to 20 watts for, for my testing. Now, um, let's just take a look inside uh, at the capacitor connected so that it operates like a butterfly. There's two elements there in the capacitor. Uh, an antenna element comes into each stator, and the rotator is connected uh, between them and is insulated, which makes it uh, the parts that, are, uh, that don't move 
are connected to the antenna, which is good because that helps keep a, a good solid connection in there. And it acts like a butterfly, like the MFJ, although the MFJ is a true butterfly. And uh, here in this picture, the capacitor for the MFJ, you can see that the plates are placed far further apart than they uh, are in this antenna. Now, um, the test environment that I'd set up for this thing was a full, uh, full field setup, except I did use utility power. Uh, I had a table chair, power supply, the radio, external analog SWR meter, to, and it was set to reverse position uh, to quickly see where the dip is in the tuning. Uh, pen and paper, headphones, microphone, and, and a clock set to UTC, and a logbook, um, and pen and paper. Um, I used the Tentec Jupiter because it's a good, stable, dependable radio, and I can vary the output power. Uh, in this case, I had it set to 20 watts, which would be a QRP that, or at least low power that you might use uh, out in the field to do field day or uh, islands on the air or anything like that that you want to be portable. Uh, the tripod on the thing is rather tiny. Uh, so I attached the antenna to the edge of the table with some uh, duct tape and felt much better about its chances of staying upright. And I've got it set up here in the shack um, to do the uh, digital type things. And so it's standing here, although just a few minutes ago I barely brushed it and the thing came down. So if you are going to set it up and in, inside uh, you know put it some place that's good for it where you get good results uh, but where it won't get knocked over now let's talk about the mfj 1788 which is their equivalent it's got the capacitor and the the loop element and so on the mfj antenna is definitely not designed to break down for transport it does not break down at all it comes right out of the box, ready to go, and that's the way it gets transported. It's much heavier, much heavier than this antenna. Of course, considerably more bulky because it doesn't stow in a bag. And you have to have uh, the control box in order to operate it. Uh, so really, it's designed for different use case. The 1788 is designed for permanent outdoor installation. If you read the manual for it, it hints strongly that it should be horizontally polarized and up pretty high, uh, which is a use case I haven't tried yet, but will. Right now it's still on top of a 2x4 out in my backyard. Um, but it, they're different use cases. You would not sling the MFJ over your back to go for a hike in the Blue Ridge Mountains. You just, just wouldn't do it. Whereas this would work perfectly with uh, hardly any additional weight. Um, the 1788 uh, is really designed to be permanently mounted up higher. So l let me tell you about the operations. Uh, when I got out there, it was disappointing, not because of the antenna, but because the propagation conditions were so bad. I made a video asking for folks to support the test by being on the air on last Saturday morning, May 27th. And I give my heartfelt thanks uh, to all, of pre who pre uh, all who participated, and I apologize for only hearing uh, one. Um, I called repeatedly on CQ on both 40 and 20 meters and had one QSO all morning. The band conditions were abominable. I hardly heard anyone on the air. Uh, there was some sort of a contest going on somewhere and I wasn't able to break into any of the pileups. I will admit I would, wanted to be inside my shack with my FTDX uh, 3000. Uh, and the amplifier on and put more like 500 watts rather than 20 out to uh, talk to those people. But uh, I don't know, a better operator uh, may have got them. Now this guy that I did have the one QSO with was in San Diego. 
He said my signal was poor, and his was poor also. I could barely hear him, but we did complete the QSO. And now, he had been listening for me as a result of my plea, and many other stations were listening for me, but uh, no further contacts were made. And I thank you again for uh, trying to be there to contact me on Saturday the 27th, and someday we'll try that again and uh, maybe try a live video feed with it so we can kind of participate in a, in a bigger sense. Now the other use case was uh, based on this little um, QRP Labs Ultimate 3 QRSS slash Whisper unit right here. It puts out one quarter watt on uh, 30 meters, uh, 30 meters Whisper, and uh, the antenna location is right here. It's just out of the field of view of the video. Um, I, I s did the tuning to the right frequency using my MFJ antenna analyzer. And uh, I did note a hair tiny bit of backlash in the dial on the antenna. That, so it took several tries to get it to land just right on the right frequency. And since the temperature in this room is fairly stable, uh, it seems to stay tuned and I get uh, the whisper contacts. Now, most contacts were stateside or Canada. You'll notice here a strong east-west pattern because the null is pointed north to south, which did not stop VE5CAF, however. Uh, that one's almost due north. Uh, there were two long-distance contacts, one in New Zealand and one in Australia. Okay, let's think about that. A quarter watt goes out of a mag loop antenna indoors and goes all the way to New Zealand and Australia to be heard. Uh, ZL1RS heard my whisper signal. He's 17,725.8 miles away from me. That's not bad. That's a lifetime high for me, too. And uh, yes, it did it. So th this might be something you could look for, uh, exploring digital modes uh, with this. As digital modes often don't require anywhere near the power uh, that uh, the single sideband does. So, conclusions. Uh, it's a field antenna designed for minimum setup teardown time. It, it's not a substitute for a dipole. Um, it is easy to tune, but it does require putting out a few watts on the air for final tuning or using an antenna tuner uh, like I did. It's a good listening antenna uh, for shortwave listeners. Um, if you just want to see what else is out there on the HF bands, it tunes all the way through everything, so might as well use it. Um, now, it, uh, if this is your use case, then the Chameleon P-Loop might be just right for you. Um, I'd say get the power compensator, given it allows more power output. I'd really like to see a portable loop like this actually be able to handle 100 watts. Um, and perhaps as the power compensator becomes more widespread and better understood, there will be enough usage to give us confidence to go ahead and kick out a full 100 watts. Because so many radios are 100 watt radios. Now from a low power digital point of view, this could be a great antenna for transmitting very weak signals such as Whisper, um, JT65, JT9, and other things like that. I would not look to this antenna to solve the apartment dweller problem, though it might solve it for low power digital modes. However, if you are apartment bound, you can take this antenna in its bag and easily set it up in your local park and work that way. Just set it out on a picnic table and see what you can get. Now, the antenna is light enough that perhaps even a hiker could find it useful given its short setup and teardown time and portability. I, and I definitely agree that, it, that this antenna is built to last. It is just solid. Everything on it is beautifully constructed. There's no little leftover bumps or burrs or tears or anything like that. It's just very nicely done. So please click like and subscribe and click on the bell. Also, please check out my tip jar and my Patreon page. Until next time, 73.